What's up everybody, I'm Z Wade, the Z Wade and Z Wade Photo. And today I wanna to do a follow-up to the patriotic bikini shoot that you saw yesterday. Because that was the first shoot that I did that wasn't experimental with the Nikon Z9. I've been doing a lot of experiments and a lot of just kind of plinking around kind of shooting, but not any like serious kind of constructed shoots. And so I learned a lot about shooting the Z9 in really harsh lighting conditions without any assistance from the flash. And it really is kind of a game changer. So we're gonna go through some images and I'm gonna point out some editing things that I did, uh, some things that kind of come in handy when you're shooting in harsh lighting conditions, and, and also just some really kind of crazy things that I stumbled upon while using the Z9. Now for this shoot, I decided to take out, of course, as I mentioned, the Z9, and the lenses that I took were the 50 millimeter F 1.2 S and the Nikkor Z MC 105. And let me tell you, those are my favorite lenses to take out together. That is such an awesome combo to take out for like a portrait shoot. I mean, it's really, really insane. The 105, I should mention as far as all of the lenses go, that one seems like it works absolutely beautifully with the Z9's uh, eye tracking. I don't know what would make it perform better than anything else, but it is just, I mean, dead nuts. I mean, really, really spectacular. But let's get into some of the images. So here I went with a more kind of uh, natural skin tone. I didn't do anything spectacular with the editing on this, aside from the things that I normally do. It is common practice for me whenever there's a lot of tattoos, I go in and I paint them and I do a little individual work to them just to make them kind of poppy. And of course, because of the lighting conditions that we have, it's really easy for even an eyebrow to kind of darken the iris just because the sun is right above us, just coming straight down. And so I, of course, brighten the eyes, as you can see. Now this one, I just wanted to put across. I, I did a little bit of brightening of the eyes but the eye tracking absolutely nailed this image. That's what I was talking about with the 105 MC 2.8 um, macro lens. Oh man, it just absolutely nailed it. And it's razor sharp, right? Offensively sharp. Here we're back to the 50. Again, I did the individualized work to the tattoos, did some eye brightening and a rather natural kind of skin tone. Now the part two, they're just the ones that I thought were better. Um, not necessarily the best of the shoot, but this is actually kind of a, a, a tough edit right here just because of how dark the eyes were. But I did brighten them up a little bit and uh, I actually did not do the indiv individualized uh, tattoo work on this one. Now on this one, I just decided to go for more of a desaturated look. Not that interesting. It's not really my style but I do it every once in a while whenever I feel like I'm getting bored of like the skin tones. Like if I have a lot of kind of the same kind of range of tones, I'll mix it up a little bit. Black and white wasn't necessarily working that well in, in all of the scenes of this shoot, but in this one in particular, I tried to do it black and white. That's always my first step if I get tired of the regular natural tones, but it didn't work, so I just desaturated it a little bit, and I think it turned out pretty good. And then I went straight back to the <laughs> natural skin tones. See, it's not all about editing that makes these, you know, in the better category rather than the good category. It's the poses, uh, the, the, the way that the composition worked out after I got home and looked at it. You know, everything goes into what makes it better. And these were just, you know, better composed, better lighting, and of course, better edits. Now, these are the top images, and I want to go through a few of these because there's some that like really blew my mind, not by the image, right? But by how I was able to shoot it, specifically because I had the Z9 in my hands with no flash. Well, this one, of course, it's razor sharp right on the eye. And I did the individualized editing to the tattoos. And I mean, it looks marvelous. But now I can step back with the 50 millimeter one, two, and I can take advantage of this just little bit of shade and you know the edit just turned out fantastic on this now zoomed in you can see like how rad this image is it, it just looks great everything just kind of lined up to to be beautiful with this image 
Of course, the black and white out of the 50 millimeter 1.2 and the 100 millimeter are fantastic. Uh, I don't remember what lens I was using on this one, but uh, it, it looks great, an awesome range of tones. I like how, how dark it turned out, um, really, really, really nice. This is probably my favorite image from the entire set, just because of how it turned out. It's 100% like my style, right? It's got a little bit of an HDR kind of feel in the subject but the background is really kind of like neutral. These days I've been editing the subject uh, individually outside of the background and then I do the background on its own and then I bring the overall image together and that's because I like to really pull the image out of the background. I find it, it gives me what I used to love out of old lenses, which is uh, that character, that kind of pop that some of these older lenses have that Modern, most modern lenses, they've corrected for these imperfections, but they've, they've kind of gotten rid of uh, pop. And that's unfortunate, but this is the closest I've been able to get to create that 3D effect where the image is coming out at you. And that's why I like this image so much. It's everything came together and, and the edit is really what made this one just like go to the next level as far as like my style goes. Now the tattoo itself is fantastic and it's just lifted and elevated from the uh, the tattoo work that I put in. It, it just looks awesome. This is the thumbnail for that video. And not only is it a strategic thumbnail uh, designed to hopefully attract the most attention, uh, but it's also absolutely insanely sharp on the eye. Now these were all with eye tracking, okay? So, it, I mean, the Z9 did a fantastic job with the lens. I'm pretty, I'm fairly certain this is the 100 millimeter macro. Now I wanna throw this one up first. It's the final image, but I, I don't wanna finish on this one in this follow-up video. Uh, this is just like a black and white, um, not the best lighting for a really awesome silvery black and white, but I was able to put quite a bit of, of work into it uh, to, to make it look really good, but I like the softness of it, I pulled back the the texture and the sharpness, but I boosted the clarity to kind of give it, to raise it off of the background, the subject off the background, but to kind of soften it to the kind of like the 1920s style that I used to do all the time that I haven't really done lately. But uh, I, I really like that with higher megapixel cameras to actually pull back the, the sharpness of the image to, to give it like a glow, but you still have a little bit of the detail because it's such a high megapixel. Now in this image that I've saved for last, this is what I was talking about whenever I was mentioning that, you know, there's things that you can do with the Z9 that are just kind of game changing. This is it. This is shot in the absolute brightest point of the day, okay? No shade on a beach, right? A, a lake beach, okay? Super, super bright with the 50 millimeter F1.2. And you're not gonna believe this, that in broad daylight at 64 ISO, to me, the F1.2 is a beautiful lens all the way through, but it's true artistic creaminess sweet spot is at that one two. That's where the artistic quality is for that lens. It is the most artistic looking lens uh, in the Z lineup, right? It's my favorite lens of all time, especially when I can use it at, at 1.2. It's that secret sauce. I shot this at f1.2 and because the Z9 will go up to ridiculous shutter speeds, I shot this at 64 ISO. So as clean as it can get at 1.2, as artistic as the Z lineup can get and the shutter speed was able to go up high enough, right? Way past 8,000 to get a actual proper exposure. In this image, the hair back here is a little bit funky, but oh my gosh, is this lens just screaming. I cannot believe that I'm able to shoot broad daylight at f1.2. It just blew my mind. These follow-up style videos are actually going to start appearing at the end of these photo shoots. Now this was a unique one because I wasn't able to use the DJI Action 2. Uh, I didn't even bother taking it out because it was so hot. I knew we were gonna be at the lake very little shade, it was gonna overheat anyway. So because of that, it wasn't really like a live shoot, but just an image review. And whether that is the case or whether the DJI is going out and you can see me shooting live, 
I want to start doing these follow-up videos for the people that might be interested because I do get questions in the comments of like, hey, you know, like what lens are you using or where is that at? And so I just kind of wanted to start bringing this in for the people that are interested. For those of you that prefer the shorter videos, if you make it all the way through to the image review, I appreciate it. But I understand if you just like to see the shoot and see the images, hey, you know what? I'll see you in the next one at whatever minute it cuts off, five minute mark, whenever it goes to the follow up. Either way, I appreciate you watching any duration of my videos. And if you find them helpful, informative or entertaining, I hope you'll consider a like, a share and a subscribe. Check out ZWadePhoto.com. I'm Z Wade, the Z Wade and Z Wade Photo, and I'll see you in the next one.